What is up YouTube? I'm Galdate74 here bringing you a different type of video today. I say different but it's not really different because all my content is league content and this is another league battle I'm bringing you. But it is not the IBA and it is not the ABC. This is the APM, the, the Association PokeTuber Mondel, I think that's how you say it. This league is ran by Jetswarly. It is a tier-based system. I've been in this league for a bit now as this is not going to be a draft analysis. I did upload a draft analysis already. It is in my channel it there's a playlist for it somewhere around here but anyway and if you guys are not aware i have been streaming these games not live but postcom i did a weeks one through four stream i did a weeks five through eight stream and as i'm recording this and yesterday i recorded a i streamed a nine weeks nine through twelve stream now the one, weeks one through four stream is live on my youtube five through eight is not going up unfortunately because i lost the file and I had, it was just a scuff stream in general. It was just really bad. So I apologize to my weeks 5 and 8 opponent that won't be on YouTube. I'm going to try and get 9 and 12 up sometime next week. But spoilers, we have made playoffs. And I did say I was going to upload playoffs. I decided to go the streaming route because I wanted to take a different approach to league content. As yes, it gives me a way to be a little more informal on streams. While here on YouTube, a little more like professional, quote, quote, barely, barely. And it just gets me used to streaming. So that's why I decided to do that in the end. I might try and do some live streams, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but it's all over on my Twitch, it's in the description below, but I'm uploading playoffs here on YouTube rather than streaming them. Again, to reiterate, this is Jet Swarly's League, big thank you to Jet Swarly for inviting me to this league, it's probably one of the greatest leagues I've ever been in, it's such, so fun, no one's toxic in this league whatsoever, everyone's here for fun, and it's just very, really unique, so big shout out to Jet Swarly. Uh, but anyway, without, <laughs> with all that out of the way, we are here for our quarterfinals game of the APM. We did end off the season with an 8-4 record, like plus 18. It was pretty freaking good. And my opponent we are facing is Sergio. Sergio is 7-5 at ending the season. Sergio's team name is the Stolly team, and it is pretty interesting because even though his team itself I don't think is that Stolly, it, the way he plays it is pretty Stolly, so there's that. He's been regarded as like the second most Stolliest player next to Ben Dorita. So it's understandable, but I could definitely see some offensive presence coming from his team if you just look at it, which I will go down in a second. We have faced Sergio twice, uh, week one and our last week. Week one, we did beat him 5-0, and week 12, I decided to give him the forfeit win because I can't meme with stall, to be real with you, and I didn't want to reveal any sets because the chances of us facing in playoffs were high, and what do you know, we're facing in playoffs. Uh, but we are in the same division, and lastly, before I go into his team, I am going to list off the playoff bracket real quick. In our conference, it is Samuelson versus the Beardy Dragon, and it's me versus Sergio. And in the other one, it is Jed versus Great Warrior. That's an exciting battle. And then it's Love versus Trap Peach. So for uh, for our side, we're hoping that we can obviously win this game. And I'm kind of hoping Samuel beats Beardy because Beardy did really bad things to my team last time, and I don't want that happening again. Just my matchup is a little bit better against Samuel overall. So hopefully that happens. But you know, it's whatever happens happens. But that is how the playoffs are going to break down. I should have thrown something on screen. There's a few things on screen that I didn't mention that might be put up. But anyway, that is the playoff picture. And we are finally going to get into this team builder. So I'm going to list off Sergio's team now. Sergio's team consists of Mega Venusaur, Mew, Scizor, Gudra, Chansey, Kurum with Z-Moves, Comfey, Lipard with Z-Moves, Vivian, Sableye, Pukamuku with Z-Moves, and Shelgon. Now, what I think he is going to bring consists of Mega Venusaur, Scizor, Gudra, Curum, Comfey, and Lipard. Though, I, there's a really high chance he brings Mew or Chansey as well, but I don't really have too much problems with those. Uh, Curum is a bit of a problem. Switching into it is a little bit hard. Its main offensive presence is just Ice Beam, Earth Power is just extremely hard to switch into. Uh, Lipard's annoying. I can deal with it, but definitely something I have to be careful of with T-Wave. Like, Prankster T-Wave is just really bad against my team, really good against my team. So that's something I have to be aware of. And the one thing that Prankster isn't affected by, which is Hydreigon, uh, Live Party learns play rough. So switching in Hydreigon is just not free for Live, for, uh, live Party whatsoever. If he does end up deciding to bring Mew, it's going to be a defensive Mew. He has ran defensive Mew every time he's brought Mew. So it's something, uh, something to note. And last time we fought, he did bring an offensive Scizor, like a Bandit Scizor. And that is pretty good work against my team. So I could also see him bringing that as well. But that is all I have predicted for his team. The main goal for this team I have is that I'm going to try and take advantage of Chansey if it comes. And if he doesn't bring Chansey or Comfey, then Hydreigon just kind of comes in and clicks buttons until everything dies. Now, Hydreigon's got a really good matchup outside of Chansey and uh, Comfey. And again, if those two come, I'm going to try and take advantage of those two mons as much as possible with my X control that I do have. And that is going to be it for his team. I'm, the mons I am bringing this week consist of Salazzle, 
Mega Gallade, Klefki, Excadrill, Hydreigon, and Golbat. I did forget to mention that you can see my team alongside uh, my opponent's team, even though I'm about to fade it off in a second. But just so if you guys want to look at the matchup, you guys can pause it and look at the matchup there. But the first one, as I just mentioned, is going to be Salazzle. Salazzle is rocking the Black Sludge with max HP, 92 Spit Attack, and 168 Speed with the Timid Nature. Moves being Toxic, Taunt, Flamethrower, and Knockoff. The goal here is to surprise Chansey, because Chansey usually switches into this thing, though it doesn't like Toxic or Taunt. <laughs> And I can just knock it off. It's Eviole. Uh, hopefully that's the main goal for knockoff. And that's really the only reason it's there. It beats Scizor offensively. It beats Vivian offensively. It beats Confei, unless it's got HP ground. But if it's got HP ground, then Golbat can kind of switch into it. And the Pukumuku, I could just taunt that and it's just nothing. So that is what, that's the mons that Slazwell is mainly here for. It's to make sure his stall doesn't get too out of hand. I can taunt something. If Mew, for whatever reason, doesn't have a second move, I can stop that 1v1 as well. So that's pretty cool. And Venusaur doesn't want to switch in and take a Toxic, basically. If it's got Earthquake, then I have to be a little bit careful, but Venusaur just can't really switch in because if Venusaur gets Toxic Poison, then it's just a really tough time for my opponent. But that is the quick little Salazzle set. Next up, we have Mega Gallade. Mega Gallade is rocking the max attack. Gallade, obviously, or Galadite. Uh, 32 HP, 224 speed with the Jolly Nature. Moves being Taunt, Psycho Cut, Drain Punch, X Scissor. Psycho Cut is mainly here for the Mega Venusaur. I, the Zen Headbutt and Psycho Cut didn't really matter because they're both doing over half, so it was just whatever. Taunt is to make sure I can just stay in on Pukumuku every time. Um, X Scissor is for Mew because if he's bringing a defensive Mew, I'm going to taunt it so he can't burn me, and I don't think he's going to be running Shadow Ball. And. I can just 1v1 it that way, so as long as I just taunt it down. If it's Rocky Helmet, that's the only way I think Gallade loses to Mew. So that's pretty cool. It beats Guja offensively. It beats Chansey. It takes advantage of that thing. A Kyurem, because Kyurem is kind of a problem. Liepard, though I don't want to be uh, paralyzed. That could be a thing. So that is, that's mainly what Mega Gallade's here for. Mega Gallade is just really good against stuff that are pretty scary against my team overall. So there's that. Next up, we have Klefki. Klefki is rocking the leftovers with... Uh, max HP, 212 but def with a calm nature and 48 speed. Moves being spikes, magnet rise, dazzling gleam, and toxic. Speed's there to outspeed a non-invested Mega Venusaur, even though I don't really need it. I'm not really going to be staying in. Uh, spikes are really good against this team because his defoggers just almost don't exist, or he's not, he doesn't really bring defog on like Scissor or something like that, or Mew or whatever, so that's pretty cool. Um... I lost my train of thought there for a second. But Klefki is here to do all a few things. A lot of his lower tiers don't like Klefki, like Sableye doesn't like Klefki, uh, Vivian. Uh, Sableye could come if he wants to like wall Gallade, but that's really all Sableye does for him. Uh, it's a good switch into Liepard, because Liepard can't really touch me, though I don't really want to get knocked off. And it stops the Mew. And then one thing I'm noticing, it does kind of switch into Kiram, though I don't really want to be taking Earth Powers repeatedly. So that's something I definitely have to watch out for. It's my only really good switch into Kiram, quote, quote. But luckily, I can offensively do with Kyurem, so it's not the biggest threat in the world. But that is what the Klefki is mainly here for. Next up, we have the Excadrill. Excadrill is an interesting set. Excadrill is rocking 160 HP, 156 attack, 192 speed of the Jolly Nature, but the Shuka Berry and Mold Breaker. Moves being Swords Dance, Sub, Iron Head, Earthquake. I brought the set last time, except the EVs were a little bit different because he had a Tangrowth originally, but he dropped Tangrowth with Gudra, so now I gotta like fix my EVs for that. Uh, you guys will see in the battle. Uh, this sub is supposed to not be broken by Seismic Toss, but I did not put enough HP EVs in there, and it, it does break, so you guys are going to see that in the battle. But that's why I put all that HP in there and the rest of the tag. I can sub up on, like, Chansey, mainly to take advantage of it, obviously. SD in its face, and then he just doesn't really have good switch-ins. Nothing can take really two hits. Same with Konfei. Uh, unless Konfei's got, like, HP ground again, then it's not really a problem. Even if he does have HP ground, I have the Shuka Berry, so I can shut S up an SD and Iron Head it to death. And just his team just does not like this. And because of Mold Breaker, I can break through Pukumuku quite easily. So that's why Pukumuku is not a problem. Uh, Exit Drill, last time in week one I faced him, was a win con. But this week, it's while it is a win con still, it's not my main win con. As I'm going to get into my main win con right now, as we're going to move on to Hydrogen. Hydrogen is rocking max special attack, 184 speed with a timid nature, 72 in HP. Holding the Expert Belt, moves being U-Turn, Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower. This is my uh, win con. I explained it a bit earlier. I am kind to take advantage of Chansey and Confei if they decide to come, because those two kind of wall Hydrogen. But if I'm able to either take advantage of those, then Exodrill basically wins. But if they don't come, then Hydrogen can basically win, because Hydrogen, outside of those two mons, does really good against this team. Venusaur has to be chipped a bit because of, you know, Thick Fat exists, but that's not really a big deal. This beats Mew. This beats... I can take a Scizor, Bullet Punch, and Flamethrower it down. This beats Gudra with a little bit of chip. It beats Kyurem, because it's unless it's Scarf Kyurem, but I don't think it'll be Scarf Kyurem. It'll probably be like Z-Move or something like that. Uh, Liveheart can't use T-Wave, but like Liveheart can't switch in on me. 
So, Hydrogen just has a really, really phenomenal matchup this week, as long as I can get rid of Chansey. Obviously, Chansey just walls it, but if I can U-turn out on a predicted U-turn, then I, that's, it's looking pretty good for me. That is Hydreigon. And lastly, we got Golbat. Golbat is rocking the Eviolite. Moves being Toxic, Super Fang, Brave Bird, Roost. Uh, max HP, 136 defense with an image nature, 80 in attack, and 44 in speed. Uh, I do not remember exactly what this This was to outspeed, non-invested, I think, Kyurem, even though realistically he's going to be invested, so it's kind of like whatever. Um, I put a little bit of attack so something's sub doesn't get broken. I forget who's sub. Um, I don't quite remember. Someone's sub gets broken with this little bit of attack investment. Or I just wanted the attack investment. I realistically don't know. But this is a really good stall breaker against his team along paired with Salazzle. My double poison core is really good. Uh, this stops the Venusaur from becoming a big problem. Obviously Venusaur can't do anything to me unless it's got knockoff. Or it's got like leech sheet. But I'll win the 1v1 eventually. Uh, it's a nice switch in the Scizor, the Scizor is still, it's, Bandit Scizor is a little scary, but it's not, like, that scary. Uh, it's a good switch in to, uh, Confei as well, Confei cannot touch this thing for the life of it. And, yeah, that's Golbat, it also deals with some of his lower tiers, but, you know, whatever. But, that is Golbat, and I think it's gonna do some really good work, it's the first time I'm actually using it, I didn't use it in the, um, I picked it up week 10, and I haven't used it in regular season once, so, it's my first time using Golbat, hopefully it does work. Uh, that is going to be the team. I'm looking very forward to it. I hope I predict his sets right because he has been bringing similar sets, not like the similar mons, but like, you know, you know what I mean. Like defensive Mew is going to come if Mew comes. Uh, defensive Chansey, obviously, but all that extra good stuff. But that is the team. We're going to head over to Pokemon Showdown and we're going to watch the battle. All right, we are here in Pokemon Showdown, and I'm seeing that he did not bring the Comfate or the Lie part. That is great to see. He did bring Mew and Chansey, so I'm pretty happy overall with what I'm seeing. Chansey's going to be a little bit annoying, but if I can get rid of Chansey, uh, Hydreigon basically just wins. I need Venusaur to be a little more chipped down, but besides that, Hydreigon, again, just wins the game. I got to get rid of Chansey. That is my win con for this game. I'm going to leave with Hydreigon because it's basically just a free U-turn on anything, as Mew is a good lead, so that's pretty good. I'm going to U-turn out on the Chansey, and I did mention in my team builder if... Chansey was going to come out on Hydrogen. I was going to take advantage of it with Excadrill. And I also mentioned to my team builders that um, I messed up my EVs on Excadrill. And Seismic Toss does actually break my substitute. That is really unfortunate. And at this point in the battle, I was kind of tilted by it. So I just clicked Earthquake just to do damage. And I'm glad I did because Kirim came in and took a lot of damage from this thing. Now, I am Shukaberry, so I'm just going to stay in and click Iron Head as he does set up a substitute. That's great. So he's going to break a sub here. And I'm just going to click Iron Head till he attacks me, which he does here. And I do eat the Shuka, and I do live. And I'm going to click Iron Head, and down goes the Kyurem, turn 5. His biggest offensive threat is gone right away. That is great news. That Kyurem was very scary. He told me he was about to click uh, Ground Z, too. And I was like, oh, that would have been really scary if he ended up doing that. But gladly, I d he didn't. I'm going to click in. I'm going to stay in and click Sub. I decided at this point in the battle... I don't need Excadrill because I have other ways to deal with Chansey than just Excadrill as well as Pukamuku. So I'm just going to get some nice free chip on this Venusaur. I click sub so he gets less from Giga Drain. Chip on this Venusaur and the Kyurem is dead. So that was a great series of turns right there. I'm going to Mega Evolve and click Psycho Cut on the Venusaur because it's no drawback. I said I said a lot of my team builder if you ended up skipping it that uh, this Gallade has Taunt on it. And I'm expecting it to be a defensive Mew. So I'm just going to click Taunt and you're going to see here he actually goes to the Stealth Rock. So that's pretty cool. I don't really expect this thing to have Shadow Ball, so I'm just going to click x -Scissor. It's going to do a load of damage to this thing as Pukamuku comes in. And that's good because I can just click X. I can just click Taunt the next turn. I originally had, I had the idea of sub-3 attacks, but I thought Taunt 3 attacks would be a little bit better. And I'm really glad I went with it because Taunt is proving to be really worthy here as he just clicks Counter. I did forget that this thing actually did get Counter, so I do have to switch out. I can't just stay in because he's just going to Counter me down to death. Luckily, Slazzle is the free switching in the world. As he goes into Chansey, not the biggest deal. I can knock off this Eviolite. I'm sure he's not expecting it as I knock off the Eviolite because who runs knockoff on Slazzle? He goes for Seismic Toss. It does a chunk, but it's okay. I am full HP invested. And at this point, I just click Toxic, I think, to either force a heal bow or force a switch at this point. As he's going to go for Seismic Toss again, it does a bit of chunk. I decide, even though I could maybe beat this 1v1, I don't want to like sack Slazzle yet because it's still really important in this game. So I make kind of a ballsy play, I go into Gallade, hopefully he doesn't click T-Wave, but assuming he didn't click it on Salazzle, he doesn't have it, so that's why, that was my mindset. As now I can just click Drain Punch on the Pukamuku switch in, that is fine, because I'll get health back, and I can just taunt it the next turn, and a Pukamuku taunted is not that scary whatsoever. So I'm going to click Taunt, and he is just going to reveal actually the Gastro Acid. So he's got Gastro Acid and Counter. I'm assuming one move is Recover. So he definitely, he definitely, I realize he doesn't have Soak or Toxic. And I'm going to remember that for a bit later. I go into Hydrogen because it's free. 
And I'm predicting him to go back in the chain I'm gonna click U-turn, but he actually does stay in, and I'm just like, oh, okay, let's, I kinda hope he doesn't, he's gotta go for counter, so. Cloud Phoenix gotta take this hit, it's fine, it's not gonna do too much, it's like 19%. And even though his taunt is probably going to wear off, this is just free spikes for me because if Suzor has defog, I'll know. Or this Mew, I'd, ra I'd rather know now. And Mew coming in now is fine because I did build this Klefki to beat this Mew 1v1. As I'm just going to click Toxic and I do land it luckily and Synchronize is going to affect me. As he is going to get up his rocks, that does suck for Golbat a bit, but overall it's not the biggest thing in the world. As now, I'm going to click uh, Spikes, I think. Yeah, I cleared another layer of Spikes up, which is going to help me out later. This Mew busts out the Flamethrower and crits me. Uh, that's That did surprise me, 100%. I was not ready for that Flamethrower. So, he's got Rocks and Flamethrower. I'm assuming he's got Roost, so I'm going to go into Hydreigon, expecting, like, I can just take a hit. But he goes into Chansey. Uh, that kind of sucks. It's it's fine. It's whatever. I'm just going to use her out on this thing and go into Gallade. Knowing this thing doesn't have... Uh, Thunder Wave, and assuming it just wants to recover up HP, I'm going to put some offensive pressure on more, as Glade is doing a really good job of putting some offensive pressure on my opponent's team, because he doesn't really have good switch-ins. A scissor is going to come in, and because of the spikes, these spikes are really big, because the spikes might, without the spikes, I probably didn't two-shot this thing, but luckily I do. This ends up being Bandit Scizor, because that does a load of damage, but luckily he just gives me the scissor. And we're looking pretty good. It is five to four right now, but we are definitely looking like a having a, like being in a strong position. Can't talk. I'm gonna taunt this thing because yeah, it stops it from doing anything. And at this point, I know that Salazzle is the freest switch into Pukumuku in the entire world. So I'm just gonna go right back out into Salazzle, and I go into Klefki. I get a Klefki. I, I remember now. Uh, he goes for counter. He does not have Soak Toxic. He has one or the other. And why would you run Soak if you don't have Toxic? So he probably has Toxic. This allows me to get up my last layer of spikes. And Venusaur isn't really that scary because I have Golbat in the back as now I have three layers of spikes up. His only way to defog them is Mew, and I'm assuming Mew really doesn't have defog, or I can at least taunt it with other mons. And it is on a toxic timer anyway, so he's going to go for Leech Sheets. That's kind of annoying, but Golbat can still beat this uh, Venusaur 1v1 in the end. Now here I'm predicting him to switch out, uh, so I'm just going to click Super Fang, but he does stay in. Uh, that's not really a big deal, he just clicks Synthesis and he's going to get a lot of recovery back. It's not that big of a deal, so I'm just going to click Roost this turn, I can beat this eventually. As he goes into the Pukumuku, as I'm going to click Roost, uh, Pukumuku is going to get a little bit of HP recovery back from the Leech Sheet, basically almost negating the spikes damage after the leftovers. And this thing is going to end up clicking recovery because I do not have Taunt on this Golbat. But that is quite fine because this thing is now on a timer, and I have basically have to have this Chansey force to heal bell. But if I can prevent this Chansey from heal belling, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go into Slazzle, because Slazzle can't do anything to the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Pukumuku can't do anything to Slazzle. He does reveal the Toxic, finally. And now I get to click Toxic for free, because he's either going to stay in and die here at some point, or something else gets poisoned on his team, and it's going to be Chansey, and that is pretty good. The worst case scenario would have been, like, Mew, but Chansey's really good. Uh, I get the Spike damage plus Toxic. I'm just going to taunt this thing so he can't Heal Bell up. And luckily for me, he actually does, does click Heal Bell, so that's just another free round of Toxic. And now since this Eviolate's gone, I am going to click Flamethrower. It's, it's not going to be doing much, it's still a freaking Chansey, but it's still something. It, toxic's going to wear him down a lot. And at this point, he cannot switch back out because the spikes are up unless he defogs with Mew. So I'm just going to click Flamethrower again and knocks it out anyway, and Chansey goes down. And it's 5-3, to three. Uh, spikes are up, Pukumuku's not a threat, Venusaur's not really a threat, and Mew at this point isn't really threatening either. As it turns out here on turn 39, he is just going to forfeit the game. And that's going to be it. Uh, we win 5-0. So GG to Sergio. Overall, in the grand scheme of things, I think my prep was just really good for this game, as well as my team doing really good against Stahl. Most teams I draft end up doing good against Stahl anyway. And his main offensive pressure in Kirim and Scizor. Kirim going down big was going down early was really big because his offensive pressure, uh, presence was just kind of lacking. While Scizor obviously is pretty good offensively, my team just, just so happens to do really good against it. So in the end, I just think I had a really good matchup. But regardless, again, GG to Sergio. We are going to move on to the semifinals. We face either Samuel or Beardy. I already know who we face, but I'm not going to spoil it, even though I don't think either of them upload the 8 p.m. But regardless, you guys will see next week. But just before I end off this video, to reiterate, most of these games were streamed on Twitch. So if you're confused on missing these battles, that's where they were. They weren't uploaded, like, weekly. As I did miss the uploads for week 5 and 8, so I apologize again for that. But weeks 9 and 12 will be up soon. But that is all. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you like Pokemon Draft League content, consider subscribing to the channel. That's all I got for you guys. I'm going to head out of here. Have a fantastic day, YouTube.